Time Wizard is single-handedly saving Yu-Gi-Oh! And you may not even know it. Are you sick of the Yu-Gi-Oh! meta? Can you not afford a thousand pounds every month whenever a new pack comes out? Do you miss playing Pot of Greed, Graceful Charity, and other crazy band spells? Have no fear, then Time Wizard is here. You may be asking, how can one little effect monster save the entire game? Well, actually, Time Wizard is the name of the special Konami accepted ruling that lets you pick different years and recreate them in Yu-Gi-Oh! If you've ever played Yu-Gi-Oh! above the level of Playground, you'll know that there are things like tournaments and competitions, and they rely on ban lists, which limit what kind of cards you can use in Yu-Gi-Oh! As Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't have rotation, they have to ban anything that they think is too powerful, right from the beginning of the game. Stuff like Painful Choice, very old cards, are just too good, especially when paired with modern support. Konami, or dedicated fans and stores, are running these things called Time Wizard events, where they pick a year, pick a ban list, and then you only are allowed to use cards that would have been legal for that tournament. For example, probably one of the most well-known formats, GOAT format, is specifically using a ban list from 2005, in the summer. You can use cards from any pack up to the Lost Millennium, which is sort of the end of this era of Yu-Gi-Oh! If you're a fan of the original show, this format might be the perfect thing for you. You can run Pot of Greed, you can run Graceful Charity, and Blackluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning is probably one of the most powerful monsters in the game. You can also run some very problematic cards like Delinquent Duo, so there are limits to the quality of every format. You'll have to trust me when I say this, that playing retro Yu-Gi-Oh! is like a whole new game. And that's not even going all the way back to 2005. Compare tier format to Kashtira format. The game is entirely different. In tier format, we were sending half our deck to the graveyard every turn and resolving nine chain links. Whereas in Kashtira format, you were just trying to survive either by hiding behind a load of back row or by banishing your opponent's deck. If you like Yu-Gi-Oh! but think the game is going just a little bit too fast, then GOAT is a crazy experience because it feels so much more methodical. That's not to say that GOAT players are better, but because the game is so slow, you have a lot of one card removal. DD Warrior Lady is limited because she can kill anything in battle. However, you only get one, and you need to know when to use it. You can search it easily because you have two reinforcements of the army for some reason, but you can't waste it. Compare that to a deck like Tri Brigade. Their boss monster, Shurag, can banish one card a turn, non-targeting. It's very easy to trigger, and you can do it in your opponent's turn. This deck isn't even good, but comparing that to the standards of GOAT, this card would be insane. But what if I like fast formats? Well, I keep saying GOAT because it's a very easy one to get into, but there are so many years. Edison format is sort of the peak of the Synchro era, and that format has so many viable decks. Lightsworn, Blackwing, even funny rogue decks like Evil Hero can steal games. These decks aren't meta right now, and they probably won't be top meta for a very long time. Even with the Lightsworn new support, there are just better decks. Over the years, Konami have banned so many cards, it's only by going and taking a step back in time that you can ever have a chance to play half of them. A kid who's just got into the game recently will never know the thrill of a graceful charity. Drawing three off the top of your deck and discarding two, that card is crazy. And even though it's limited in Go, you can still use things like Magician of Faith and Dark Magician of Chaos to get it back. I've activated at least five in the same duel sometimes. And speaking of Dark Magician of Chaos, this beautiful card has been nerfed and neutered over the years. While Konami used to just ban cards outright, at a certain point, I think in the mid-2010s, they started doing heavy erratas to some banned staples. Some erratas are okay. Sangan, for example. He always added a card with 1,500 attack or less from deck to hand after he goes to the graveyard. However, now you can't use that card the turn you add it. Perfectly fair balancing. Makes Sangan a little bit useless, but it's okay. Dark Magician of Chaos got heavily nerfed. He used to add a spell when he was summoned, but now it doesn't get the spell till the end of the turn, which is a real bummer, especially if you want to start playing some draw cards. Ring of Destruction became so useless. It used to just be pop a monster, you both take the damage. It led to a lot of draw games, but that's the price you pay for running cool trap cards. Now you take the damage first, and then your opponent has to have a very specific amount of life points to use it. Is this just you being nostalgic though? It's genuinely not me being nostalgic. I still love modern Yu-Gi-Oh! and I still want to play modern Yu-Gi-Oh! But these are very different games. As a teeny tiny child, I did not play a full power goat deck. Surprise, surprise, these cards were very, very expensive. In the old days, it would not have been possible for you, a little kid, to have these kind of decks at locals. However, the benefit of retro formats is almost all of the cool staples have been reprinted over the years. If you want to start building a Yu-Gi-Oh deck from scratch, the most powerful deck right now, the most meta, it will cost you hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And then it could get banned 
two weeks from now. We don't know when ban lists are gonna hit, so you could get all of your cards banned at any point. That's a crazy investment to just drop at the drop of a hat. Not only do you have to learn your deck to win, you have to learn everyone else's deck. That's the thing which separates okay players from the very best players. In a retro format, you can stop. Take a minute. You can look at all the cards that are there. These are the only cards that are ever gonna be legal in that format. If you build a deck and you're really happy with that deck, you never need to change it ever again. You can rarity bump it, you can twiddle with the ratios a little bit if you feel like it, but you never need to. You can just stop and be done. That's such a nice feeling and you don't get that ever if you play modern Yu-Gi-Oh! If you want to start playing these kind of formats, I'm going to be doing a GOAT giveaway. I'll be giving away a bunch of little homemade packs that I've put together of GOAT staples to really help you get going. If you go to the WhatNot link in my description, you won't miss the stream. And if you've never been on WhatNot before, you can sign up now. If you sign up with my registration link, you get £10 of free credit to spend on whatever you would like. I'll also be giving away packs of Maze of Valenia if you want to hunt down those bonfires and really commit to spending your money on modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Downsides of playing these formats are sometimes there are price spikes and these price spikes are often on rarity bumps. Another downside is that it will eventually become a little bit stale. The reason that Yu-Gi-Oh! stays alive is because it continuously grows and evolves, which is why I don't have a problem with the modern game continuing to get more powerful and interesting. However, the solution there is to not just play one retro format. Because these decks are so cheap, I would super suggest trying a few out. I've recently built my first two GOAT decks, my first Edison deck, and I'm looking forward to trying out new formats. And while GOAT and Edison are probably some of the most popular formats, and they've been the most explored, there are new ones getting picked up and made popular all the time. Meadowlands format has been described as the Xyz format equivalent of Edison giving you the opportunity to play things like Infernity and Atlanteans. So many cool decks that I never got to try as a kid because they were super expensive, I'm looking forward to dipping a toe in the water. As more and more players stop playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! or at least stop playing full power competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm seeing so many more people turn to retro formats. I asked around about what's making some of these formats so popular. I feel like in GOAT format, if you play at a casual level, you actually get to experience what it's like to actually play in a duel like from the original anime. Normally turns take under 10 seconds, where in current Yu-Gi-Oh! they could take up to 20 minutes. I also like that you get to use nostalgic cards from our childhood. And another big plus, of course, is the affordability of Go Format. To me, Go Format kind of feels like what Konami intended Yu-Gi-Oh! to be. It's a back-and-forth, razzle-dazzle version of the game that still has some highly powerful plays to kind of make for anime moments. And that's just some of the reasons why I've been trying Edison and Go out. It's been fun to play a new kind of Yu-Gi-Oh! You can build most of it out of your bulk. I've, I've built most of these decks about buying a single card, just a few rarity bumps that I fancied. I hope that you consider trying out a new kind of Yu-Gi-Oh! if you've not been enjoying the main game quite as much, or even if you have been enjoying the main game, it's a real breath of fresh air. I still love Mon Yu-Gi-Oh! and I'll still be playing this format, but I can't pretend that it makes my heart a little bit sad when I'm predicting that all the cards I'll need for my Yubel deck are probably going to be rarity bumped out of the wazoo. Until next time, have a lovely week.